Hey guys, what is going on? So today I figured I would make a video kind of going down to the basics of running um, E30 all the way up to E85 in your EcoBoost Mustang. I see a lot of people have questions of this, uh, about this on the um, Facebook pages, um, EcoBoost Mustang Forum, Ford Mustang EcoBoost Owners, uh, Let's Break Some EcoBoosts, all those pages. And I figured I'd make a video trying to help some people out with it and you know try and just give them the the basics on what is needed to run those specific fuels how much power you can make on them uh, etc so if you have a stock EcoBoost or a lightly modded EcoBoost basically your first step into the ethanol fuel world is going to be an e E30 blend so E30 is the highest ethanol content you can run well you can push it a little bit more but typically e30 is about all you want to run on a stock fuel system um, and that's due to the high pressure fuel pump here's a stock high pressure fuel pump that i have laying around um, compared to my extreme di on there um, but basically because of the stock high pressure fuel pump that is why you can only run up to 30 percent um, ethanol content on the stock fuel system and basically what that requires is that requires mixing um, of 93 and E85 um, So that can get kind of confusing for some people So I figured I'd lay down the basics and let you know how that typically goes. So depending on where you're at in The US or in the world. I don't know how how common E85 is in other countries to be honest, but um, You know depending on where you're at will depend on what kind of ethanol contents you're looking at um, sometimes up uh, a lot of time up north during the winter the ethanol content will be a lot lower um, I live down in Florida, so it's really easy for me because our ethanol is typically always around 75 to 85 year-round, but um, What I would recommend doing is at least you know every now and then is taking you can get these on Amazon or you know anywhere online it's basically an E85 test tube and basically it's pretty dirty, but um Basically, this is used to check the ethanol content in the E85 because even though it's called E85, you know, you'll notice a lot of pumps will say, you know, 54% to 85% ethanol. It's not guaranteeing it's always going to be E85. So I like to test mine um, and you get one of these and you, like I said, you can get them anywhere. Just search online E85 test tube or E85 test kit um, and you'll be able to get one of these. And basically the, the gist of it is there is a line see if it'll focus there there is a line and you see that black line on the bottom you actually fill with water and you fill it up to that line and then e85 gets filled up to that top black line and then what you do is you'll shake it and you'll basically set it on a flat surface let it sit and what will happen is the e85 and the water separates um i don't have I do have E85 here I just didn't set it up um, but basically the E85 and the water separates and what will end up happening is you can see all of those percentages right there and basically wherever the line is where the E85 and water separates is the ethanol content it's a fairly easy simple thing to do but um, it's always good to know the ethanol content of the station you're using um, and like I said I actually haven't tested my ethanol content in a while. I'm running full 85, but um, typically I'll test it, you know, every couple weeks, at least once a month, typically, just to see where, where we're at and all that. But um, typically around us, we, we stay pretty decent ethanol content. Um, but for E30, so I would definitely test that. So always refer to your tuner when you're running E30 on how they want you to do it. But basically how I did it is they, um, let's start off with the access port. On your access port, you have a bunch of gauges. You can change the gauges. There's different PIDs you can uh, look at. There is one for, I believe it's fuel level um, percentage. Um, I forget what it is right off the top of my head, but basically it's gonna tell you the percentage of the fuel level in the stock tank. And that'll give you, you know, anywhere from zero to 99 pretty much. So basically there's this app and it's called E85 calculator. It looks like basically it's got all these parameters that you can set in here. And what you want to do is let's say do not desired ethanol percentage. We want 
desired octane, let's leave that blank, tank size 15.5, let's say present filled is 50. I'm just gonna fill this out for you guys real quick um, and show you so you, you're just aware. Ethanol octane rating is like 104. Ethanol percentage, let's say our ethanol is 80%. So basically, I filled this all out, and if you can see that right there, I basically filled it all out, and this is going to tell me the amount of E85 to 93 I need for the tank. And basically, you, you, you literally just fill out um, the desired ethanol, which you put 30 for E30, ethanol percent in tank, which is gonna be 15 if you're coming from 93, um, it's going to be 10 to 15, roughly. Um, you can do 10. It, it all depends on on the um, on the you know fuel the station how they do it. But it's typically 10 to 15. You can even do 10, um, and that'll bring you to this right here. Um, ethanol is like 104 octane, so that's what you put for the octane. And then ethanol percentage, right there at the bottom, is where you put the ethanol content percentage that you got from this test tube um, and then on the other side it's basically the gas it's your gas tank size it's uh, percent filled which is where you get from that gauge on the axis port um, gas octane rating 93 and then the percent ethanol um, of the gas that you're using 10 15 wh whatever it's it's going to be kind of a rough estimate on that end but that'll basically give you 4.1 gallons of e85 for the whole tank you so basically what you'll do is say you have 50 percent left in your tank you'll go to the gas station with a pump with e85 and 93 fill up 4.1 gallons of e85 and then 3.58 gallons of 93 um, and then you will drive it for 10 to 15 miles let it mix up and your e30 blend is good to go and obviously didn't mention this you do need a tune from your tuner for e30 you can't just run e30 without a tune don't try and do that it's not going to work well um <laughs> But that's, that's the basics of running E30. It probably sounds kind of confusing, um, but like I said, always go ahead and refer to your tuner, ask them um, what they recommend to do for mixing. Um, some will tell you, you know, at a quarter tank, add this much ethanol, at half a tank, add this much, at three quarters tank, add this much. Um, so basically refer to your tuner and See what they say because sometimes they, they will simplify it if, if you're having issues with it or, you know, because it's kind of confusing and all that from the beginning. But after a while, after you do it a few times, it's super easy and not a big deal. But yeah, E85 calculator, it's an app. I, I, it's on uh, iPhone. I don't know if it's on Android. I think it is. But, you know, there's a whole lot of E85 calculators you can find on the app stores and online if you need it that do pretty much the same thing. Um, so... Beyond running E30 on your car. Now, actually, let me go back. So, if you're running E30 on an EcoBoost, the jump from 93 to E30 will typically net you around 30 to 40 horsepower and similar torque. I think it, I guess it depends on what the tuner, how the tuner does it. But um, for reference, my car basically full bolt-on on the stock turbo was making 375 wheel horsepower, and I think it was 469 foot-pounds of torque. Um, compared to at the time on 93, I was making 330 horsepower and I think it was like 385 foot pounds of torque. Um, so you can gain quite a bit. And I actually, on my 11.6 run a couple of years ago, I was running E30. It might've been a little bit more than that. It might've been like E40, but, um, running, running an ethanol blend, uh, to get to 11.6. So... It definitely helps you gain quite a bit of power um, compared to 93. It offers a good bit of knock resistance and you know, you'll be able to push the stock turbo a little bit harder. Um, so like I was saying, beyond E30, we have E85. However, you cannot run E85 on the stock fuel system. You have to do one of a couple things um, to be able to run E85, um, depending on your setup, depending on if you have an upgraded turbo or not. So to start off with, like I said, stock high pressure fuel pump cannot run fully 85 on unless you do a port injection kit, which I will throw a picture up on the video right now of a port injection kit. And that's basically, it's going to be a fuel bar that you add in between the intake manifold and uh, the head that's going to have four extra injectors and it'll have 
basically a harness to its own controller and it'll basically be plumbed into the, to the stock fuel system. And basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna give you port injection, which is spraying into the intake runners versus directly into the cylinder. Um, and that's, depending on the injector you have, most of the base kits um, that you get with port injection will usually be good for up to around 600 wheel um, with the injectors that are supplied. Um, and, and you know, like Speed Performance has a kit. I believe Tune Plus has a kit. There, there's a few companies that, that sell them and those typically range around, I think they're 12 or 1300 to $1,500 for the port injection kit. And basically with that, what you'll have to do for most tuners is, is you will have to get a upgraded um, aux fuel tune because they also have to tune what is called the split second controller. And that's basically a separate controller box um, that gets wired up to control the injectors. Um, and that needs its own tuning file on it, along with the tune on your actual access port that goes on the car. Um, I know it's kind of confusing if you don't really know anything about this, but it's basically just one more small controller box that gets wired in that's gonna control the injectors separately. Um, so that's one option you can run full 85 with that without upgrading anything on the DI system. Um, and that's good for about 600 wheel horsepower or so on the injectors that come with most of the kits. You can get upgraded port injectors. Um, that'll be good for more horsepower, but that's pretty much the, the general idea. Um, the other option, which I chose to go with, was upgraded DI system. Now, my car on the stock turbo on just an upgraded high pressure fuel pump has made 430 wheel horsepower, 530 wheel torque. Now that's with a built motor. Don't expect to make those kind of numbers with a stock motor um, unless you want it to blow up pretty quick. But um, even even how much power I was making probably wasn't the safest. I'm surprised I didn't lift a head or anything. But yeah, on the stock turbo, you can run fully 85 on the fuel pump right now, which I actually have the stock turbo on the car for right now. I'm running fully 85. Um, and I actually sent off my injectors to get clean, but I also have the XDI 2000cc injectors, which you don't really, okay, so from my understanding, um, on a, on a upgraded turbo, you can run without the, um, I've actually done it, um, without the inje upgraded injectors, you can run with stock injectors up to around 460 to 470 wheel horsepower, and that's where they tap out. We pushed mine to the limit and made like 506, what we we're just seeing is how far we could go, um, on the comp turbo that I used to run. Um, and yeah, so they're basically gonna, if you just have the fuel pump and you're on E85, you're gonna run out probably about four, probably 450 to 470, depending, um, you know, and if you wanna go past that, obviously you're gonna be on an upgraded turbo if you're getting anywhere near that. But if you wanna go past that, you want the upgraded um, XDI 2000cc injectors, which are a stock replacement injector um, and basically paired together, I'll show you my pump here real quick, but so here is the XDI, this is the plus 60 pump. They make an Evo pump, which is, I want to say somewhere around like a plus 40 pump or something like that, which is pretty solid. But if you want to go for bigger horsepower, um, you're going to want one of these. Um, and when big, when I say bigger horsepower, I am talking, let me set you guys back up here. I am talking, you know, six, 700, um, now, my buddy Brandon had the Evo pump on his car. He's got a, I believe it's a 6266 turbo kit. Um, he was running the XDI Evo pump and the 2000cc injectors. He tapped out at around 667 wheel horsepower. And he was basically running out of fuel from the Evo pump. Um, so basically, if, you, if you're thinking about it, up to 600 for sure you should be good on the Evo pump with the injectors. Um, and if you want to make more than that, like Brandon did, he upgraded to the plus 60 pump from XDI. And he ended up making 698 wheel horsepower on a Mustang dyno, I believe it was. So it's probably a little over 700 realistically. Um, and that's, that was on no port injection, just direct injection, upgraded high pressure fuel pump and upgraded injectors. Now, I will tell you, that I'm gonna run through some prices here real quick. So port injection is going to be cheaper. Direct injection is going to be more expensive. They, it, it really all depends on what you want. I wanted the direct injection route. 
Um, I prefer to not go with um, the aftermarket split second controller. I just wanted it all direct injection. And if down the road I want to make more power than 700 for some reason, then I guess I'll just have to go port injection most likely, or we'll see how far the direct injection will go. But for now, direct injection upgraded by Extreme DI is gonna basically take care of all of my fuel system needs. Um, and if I need to, I can go to like a E50 mix or E60 mix to make that kind of power. Um, but let me run you through. So this is the speed performance uh, port injection kit right here. Looks like that. Those run, those start at $1,340. You can get an uh, added plug and play uh, coil pack harness. You can get upgraded injectors for an extra $185 for $650 plus. Um, you know, so there's options, but figure around $1,300 to $1,500 typically for a port injection kit. Um, and that does include, if you don't get the plug and play harness, you have to wire that in um, yourself and all that stuff. So it's kind of a pain if you don't like to do wiring, which I do not like to do wiring. Um, but you know, if, if you have the choice and if you got the extra cash, you could do something like the plug and play harness. No big deal, it will cost more though. So I also have, let's see, Extreme DI high pressure fuel pump. So for the Evo, you're looking at $1,599 just for the Evo fuel pump. For the uh, 60 pump like I have, that is $2,499. So you can see how the price difference is between the two. Um, now that, like I said, that's just for the um, the pump. If you want, the, let's say you want the Evo and the injectors, which the Evo and the injectors, you'll probably be good up to about 600 wheel or so. Um, you're looking at $2,948 total. And if you want the e extra benefit of the plus 60 pump, um, you're looking at $3,848 with the 2000 CC injectors. So obviously DI is not cheap. Um, it, it is what it is and that's just how it is. But <laughs> you know, it, it is a great system and it works fantastic. Um, and like I said, if you're only looking for up to around 700 wheel horsepower, you don't want to mess with any split second controller or any separate controller system with the port injectors, then the Extreme DI system is the way to go. And I mean, you can't really go wrong with it. I've loved it so far. And once I get a bigger turbo on here, I'm gonna push it even farther and go ahead and see how much power we can make. But I know with this setup, thanks to my buddy Brandon, I'm good till you know 650, 700 at least. So, but anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be it for really anything related to ethanol on these cars. Um, the only other thing that I would recommend is if you're going to be running upgraded port injection kit or upgraded DI, go ahead and upgrade your in-tank fuel pump. I don't have that issue anymore because I have a return style system with a big like 600 liter per hour fuel pump, it, fuel cell, all that stuff. I already told you about all that stuff. But in the stock tank, um, I, what I would recommend is getting a DW400 fuel pump and throwing that in. It's a direct replacement. Um, and that should take care of you for everything you should need. You shouldn't run out of fuel with that um, until you get up towards 700 wheel or so. Um, and I know a lot of you aren't gonna wanna make anywhere near that. So you should be set to 600 or so on a DW400, no problem. But besides that, that's really it for ethanol blends. Um, if you have any uh, questions, comments, concerns, leave them down in the comment section. If you wanna see any other videos about specific subjects, leave that down in the comment section. I'm going to try to make more and more videos here as the year goes on. And as I get my build going this year, get the bigger turbo on it and all that stuff. So I appreciate the feedback. Anyways, guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't subscribed, and I'll see you next time.